Welcome to the Art, Food and Pleasure podcast. My name is Soskia de Wal. I'm a fine art food photographer fascinated by the pleasure of eating. And therefore I won an international photography award. I am co-founder of Michelin star restaurant and art gallery Olivijn in Haarlem. And I am curious, what is the role of food in art and vice versa? Therefore, I engage with the best food photographers, artists, chefs and curators around the world. Art is, uh, is the expression of a new idea. And it really doesn't matter if it's uh, painted or photographed or in the in form of a performance or whatever. It's, it's just leaving society a new idea. So and today we are talking to curator and CEO from the Food Photo Festival. Um, he started with his first food photography assignment. He made a cookbook and that cookbook was sold over millions of copies all over the world. He believes that food photographers are invisible behind all the big cookbooks. So that's why he thought up for the food photo festival to make the food photographers visible, but also to create a place where food photographers can meet each other and learn from each other. I am very happy that I can talk to him. When I discovered the Food Photo Festival in 2011, um, that was the same time I started with my own photography journey adventure. And um, I really looked up to all the photographers that are, that were exhibited there. And um, it kept me going, it kept me going. And I had a um, future perspective. I really wanted to have an exhibition there. And in 2019, I was the lucky woman who was selected one of the 110 international extremely good food photographers. I was selected for the exhibition, the printed exhibition, and I was extremely proud. At the last day, I turned out to be the winner of the whole festival and I was flabbergasted. I looked at the video where I uh, won the prize and I started to cry again because I was, I did not expect to win because the level of professionality from the food photographers are, is so extremely high. For me, it was um, amazing. Well, we will be discussing that too. And we will be also discussing the conspiracies about uh, it, when the, what's happening now with Instagram and all the bird perspective photography that's happening. And uh, so I wish you lots of fun with this, with this interview. And um, you should definitely check the foodphotofestival.com to find out more about this amazing festival. So uh, yes, it's running. Fun. Welcome, Gunther. Welcome, Saskia. Thank I you. Uh, thank you, thank you for making the time for uh, for this interview. And I want to start off with a very nice question: What if you won one hundred thousand euros for a solo exhibition? How, where, and what will we see? <laughs> oh, this is a, this is a, <laughs> a tough one. Um. You know, uh, at, um, during the lockdown, uh, I had uh, quite a bit of time uh, to go through my archive. I started photography in 78 and uh, I, I switched very much uh, subjects. So um, for me, it was a, a kind of time travel. And uh, when, I, when I looked through, I had to throw away I said, hundreds of thousands of, of slides. So I thought, well, but this could make a nice story. Um, I guess if I had uh, uh, if I had a fund to make this, I would um, I would make an exhibition of of the uh, of the the, the 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 time of being a photographer, and where well um, anywhere. So I mean, if if this could travel, uh, I, I guess I would uh, take the most of the money to make the exhibition travel to to different places and different cities. Oh yes, very interesting, nice. So and and how how did it all start for you with photography and the festival and? 
I was um, uh, well. Um, I was grown up in in Bavaria in a, in a very small town, and uh, when I finished school, I started working in a local newspaper. And um, I noticed that photography is really uh, the thing I'm I'm interested in. And so I went to Cologne and studied um, on the University for Applied Science uh, f um, photo engineering. And uh, already during the studies, uh, with, I was co-founding a, a, a photographer's agency live, which uh, um, this year has uh, his 40th anniversary. So it's just one of the few that uh, survived from this time. Congratulations! And, <laughs> thank you. I'm I'm not no longer an owner of it, but uh, I, I left it in the in the late eighties. But it's still going on, so I'm I'm quite fond of it. Um, and um, <clears throat> I worked as a as a photo journalist uh, for the Spiegel and for Geo magazine. Um, so, for example, I was taking pictures of, in the civil war in Nicaragua or in uh, or visited the camps of. Uh, uh, in uh, Northern Ireland, um, and um, at the time I photographed a lot uh, about ge genetic engineering because it interested me uh, how this is influencing our life. And uh, there was an interesting project, the Human Genome Project. Um, <clears throat> it was the decoding of the genome. And uh, I was in, in several military labs in the United States uh, to photograph, uh, to catching pictures for, to show how it's uh, the human genome is was uh, for a work for geo magazine that was really interesting and then i lived a while in rio uh, and worked for the journal do brasil uh, again more local um, local jobs and in the early 90s i started with fashion photography um, so took a lot of catalogs, um, men's fashion, women's fashion, sportswear. But in this time, I had I still consider one of my most beautiful job. It was uh, an, an, a German sportswear brand. And uh, the owner gave me a big bag of his clothes and, I, and sent me with a model, with Martina, together to uh, Baja California for three weeks. And he said, do whatever you want. You can don't combine my clothes, combine with anything, tear, uh, tear or cut holes into it. I don't mind. Take black and white or color, whatever you want. And so we, we really worked uh, and we, we found a lot of people who we could include in this catalog. And it, it has made one of my, I, I think I like it the most from, from my fashion works. And um, Coming back from then in the in the 90, 92, 93, fashion gets a bit. Uh, uh, there was a crisis in the fashion industry, and so I was asked by a German publisher to um, take pictures for a new kind of cookbook. And I thought I'm not quite the person uh, to take a cookbook because I, at this time. I could tell the difference between red and white wine for color, but this was all my knowledge I had. And uh, but he <laughs> told me, "Oh no, this is a book like um, travel book, and uh, it shows you. Um, uh, it's a kind of dictionary of good food uh, all around Europe, and uh, it it shows you recipes." And Bala said yes, and then he, uh, I, I traveled two years from. North Norway to south to Gibraltar and from uh, from Portugal uh, to to the Georgian border where I was uh, in, uh, taking pictures in traps on in Turkey uh, of tea, for example. So it, I, I, yeah, I was I was like a like a sponge there because I, I didn't know about food and. Um, uh, and every day was was a new uh, thematic, and I learned a lot. And uh, I started really loving food, and and also the people involved with food, because I noticed in any kind, uh, any any country, the people are quite the same uh, who are who are dedicated to food. And so this book, uh, it was called Culinaria Europe, so, uh, sold worldwide a couple of million copies in seventeen languages. Oh, really. Oh, how cool! You made that book. Oh, how interesting! Yeah, 
<laughs> this one and uh, culinaria Spain and culinaria France and culin culinaria Southeast Asia. So I did them quite a series. Uh, I love this work. So it, it was it was you see it was the, the possibility of combine what I've learned in in reportage photography, what I've learned in fashion photography and in scientific photography, and put it all together in uh, into food. And it was I really loved it, and I really liked the people. And um, during this time, I um, I showed my first photos from from for this book. I showed to the Feinschmecker magazine. And because I, I was a bit insecure, is this good or is it not good? I, I, I hadn't, haven't had the experience. <clears throat> and they liked it. And since then, I worked for more than 20 years. Uh, I had almost every month a big story um, uh, in the Feinschmecker magazine. And so since then, I, I mean, uh, the last years, I, I made more than 50 cookbooks. And in the uh, late, uh, 2009, when I first saw an iPhone, I saw how the pictures, uh, the, the backlight of the picture, the, the, the dynamics is so good. So I thought this is a real good device for making cookbooks. So I started my own series of, um, of cookbooks for, for smart devices. Hmm. And just uh, a week ago, uh, I published a new one. Uh, it's called Recify. Um, Recify EU, and um, at the moment it's only available in German in German language. It, it's a kind of uh, combined cookbook of uh, of the recipes I, I prepared, but also you can leave your own recipe there. So uh, either an internet recipe or a photo of your grandmother's um, uh, or any family recipes, or you write it properly, or you dictate it. So it's 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 meant to be a cookbook where you leave where you put together your own uh, your own cookbook, a collective cookbook for the whole world. <laughs> yes, a kind. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> so you can you can leave this there. And so in this time when I was a when I was a reporter, and um, um, I loved the festival in Perpignan. It's called um, Visa pour l'image. A um, beautiful um, photo festival, uh, mainly um, for social conflicts and uh, pure reportage photography. The the kind of selection is a bit poor. It's a very French angle uh, to look at the at the world, but um, they are really able to create beautiful festivals and celebrate our profession. And so I went there every year and was very happy to to meet my colleagues and to talk and to discuss and. Uh, the, just this this meeting, the, the place to have a place to meet, for me was uh, more valuable than than the rest of the festival. And the more I went into into food photography, the less um, this festival was interesting to me. So um, I really was prepared to travel all around the world to <clears throat> to um, be part of a of a food photo festival. But I didn't find one, so I was a bit naive. I thought, okay, then I do my own. And uh, <laughs> um, if I would have known what it is, I'm not sure if I would have dared to start it. But uh, I, I found a partner for for this festival, Manon. She's an event manager, and um, mm -hmm. we both together um, run it sin uh, since then. At the moment, it's. Uh, it's postponed uh, due to Corona, but uh, we are quite um, uh, confident to have the next issue in 22 anywhere in Spain. I cannot explain ex now where, but it will be in Spain. Oh, how cool, how cool. That was a question from Sylvia. She was asking, well, if it, if it will be next time, where will it be? Will it be in Valle again or will it, well, it's just now in Spain, so how nice. <laughs> But no, definitely we have to to, to 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 change the place, I guess. Yeah, but what what was the moment you realized that food photography is fine art? Because that's the mission you have with the food photo festival. Right? Well, I'm I'm a bit conflicted with the expression fine art. <laughs> um, for me, um, art um, is uh, is the expression of a new idea. And it really doesn't matter if it's uh, painted or photographed or in the in form of a performance or whatever. 
it's it's just leaving society a new idea. Um, and the rest, um, I consider um, between commercial, decorative, uh, design, uh, it, everything has, has its needs and this sense. And fine art, for me, the expression is a bit... Um, not really art, but we want to go to. So I'm, I'm careful to using it. Um, but um, you know, I saw <clears throat> there's a lot of lot of good cookbooks out there, and um, th there's um, the most of the, you when you buy a cookbook, you buy it for the recipes. But the reason to buy it normally is is good photography and i saw i noticed that photographers are completely invisible food photographers are completely invisible so i thought the festival could give um could, could draw a bit more attention to 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 food photographers you know and, and if you uh, ask people do you know david loftus they will say no if you tell them but he published more more than 16 millions of books um so uh, do you know um, Jamie Oliver? I'll say, yeah, yeah sure. And it's David Loftus' photography there, yeah. uh, which which has an an impact to to on on the marketing and on the market for this for this kind of books. And I thought, so a festival who dedicates on on food photography gives a voice uh, to to us photographers. And um, the, uh, this is one angle of the of the um, of the festival. So contact and uh, and um, giving recognition to to food photography. And the other is um, there's a, there's a lot of creativity. And if you if you look around, there's a lot of um, photography now traded as art, uh, which are uh, like Martin Paul or. Uh, even social photography, um, but you hardly see any food photography uh, traded in the in the art business. And um, yeah, I, I couldn't understand why. And if you look back in history, uh, especially you as a Dutch, uh, the Dutch paintings, it, it was food still life all the time, um, or, or uh, yeah, or portraits, or uh, but um, most subjects were, were food stills. And um, so I, I thought, well, let's, this is also the way how I choose the, the pictures for the festival. I'm looking for beyond the commercial idea of, of photography to find out what in, in our subject, food, what is done, who, who inspires us, who brings us in, uh, up front. Yeah, but I think, um, is it then more about how the food is photographed, about the food, or is it more about photography? Because when I uh, when I won uh, in 2019, I was of course very proud. But then I, I when I walked out of the theater, I was I, I overheard a conversation, and there was one one um, food stylist who said, "Oh my God, but this is not food photography. This is totally <laughs> something else." And I was like, "Well, it's it's about exactly. photography. It's not about real exactly." Yeah. So that's what um. Very interesting, <laughs> but you, I mean, I mean, you saw it in, in the exhibition in in, in Weile. Um, it, it, for me, in it, uh, a, a good architecture photography of, of bod wine bodegas is also food photography, and um, and yeah. um, good portraits of uh, of chefs or, or people working in in food for me is also food photography. Um, Yes, or the series in the, with the, with the, the the in the Belgium cafe, I, I really love that series too. It was more like yeah. documentary with the drunken yeah. people yeah. and everything. It was Austin, I really Austin, love that Austin series cafe. too. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this is also food. This is food. This is you know, food is culture, and um, uh, and um, all this is expression of food, and and um, we as photographers we capture this. So the food photography for as an art is for you is the expression of an idea yeah, about food. Exactly. Food and food concern. Yeah. This is why I was very happy yes. that you um, won the, the the award last time because your series was was really worth uh, to be shown and worth to to be um, 
uh, given the prize. It 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 has told something something new. Yeah. Well, it's, I I still uh, yesterday I I looked at the video again of me <laughs> winning that prize and I was I'm still I was so flabbergasted I didn't expect to win because the 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 level of photography is so extremely high and I was sitting next to my biggest heroes like uh, um, Tony Leduc, Remco Krijfeld, Jan Bartosman. We were just we were your friends now, but I was I was I would, did not expect it because well. It, it's not about real food food, but it's, well, as you say, it's an expression of my idea about food. And that's, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. But I'm still, I'm so happy that I won this prize. I, yeah, for me, it was, it was something really necessary because my work was not always understood as an expression of my idea about food. So um, it was a recognition. It was very welcome. So thank you for that, for seeing, oh, for you're, seeing it. I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's what's um um how do you differentiate an amateur photographer, especially then food photographer, from a professional food photographer? What are the things? Well, there are two at? two two main differences. Uh, an amateur, um, he has a, a, a limit, um, a limited technique, uh, just per, because of training. Uh, so um, <clears throat> you, you know, uh, you might take it as a conspiracy. There is a kind of Instagram conspiracy that all amateurs have to take their food from straight above. Yes. And it goes that far that uh, our buyers tell them, "Oh, there must be a new, a new way of express food. Look, do that like in, in Instagram." Uh, but which means do it from straight above. <laughs> but if you if you really think it over as a, as a professional, why does an amateur do this? First, you you cut off the noise in the background because you have a, uh, always a proper late uh, background with no disturbance, and second, you get all in focus. Uh, so you, you, as an amateur, you're obliged to have this uh, bird's eye on, on food. Uh, as a professional, you have uh, you can use tilt shift lenses. You can work with backdrops or with colors or with light to just blur or, to, uh, or, or, or burn or darken background. So you, you, as a professional, you you um, let's say you you think you look at the food. You have tasted it. You know how it tastes, and you want to to express this taste in the in the photography. Yes, and you use yeah. all te all possible techniques to do this. An amateur, I'm, I'm quite sure, an amateur is uh, uh, can have breathtaking photo photographs, but not if you send him to, for example, to your restaurant and say, "Now do this." If he hasn't a, a relation or he hasn't learned to express what he wants to express. Then he won't do it, and uh, so this this the, the kind of technique is is very important. And um, the, there's another uh, another uh, part uh, which I consider even more important. <clears throat> In, if you send an amateur to your restaurant and um, he might take a good picture, but he won't go out with a series of ten or twenty good pictures, and a professional photographer. Has the the, uh, the the background, the technique, um, uh, and the creativity to uh, to build a series of of ten or twenty pictures, which are all on the same level uh, in quality. And this, for me, is is the big dif difference. This is also the reason why we in in the food photo festival we we normally don't uh, show single pictures. We always show series of because then you understand the the, the handwriting of of the photographer. Yeah, yes, that's so true. Are we an endangered species <laughs> in ten years? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, it's you know, if you look back, uh, th th these are fashions, and Instagram is one channel, a very important channel uh, for sure. But it's one channel. Look, uh, ten years ago, you would have said Facebook will always stay on top, and now you see Facebook is. Uh, has lost completely uh, importance. So I don't know what will be in in twelve in ten years from here, but surely not Instagram. Uh, and so this is it's, it's a channel, yeah. Um, 
And then, and then yeah, yeah, what was your question? <laughs> if we are an endangered species. <laughs> No, because because Jan Jan was saying that there are a lot of marketing uh, companies who are taking over all the social media and they are making all the pictures. And like Jan said, well, I see my business running down with like 50% from the restaurant photography I'm doing. I did from the last five years until now. It just, I he, well, he's so much out of work at this time. He is into the food business right now. So he's just getting out his money with something else. So there is a big change going on in the food photography business because of the Instagram and all the marketing companies who pretend that they are food photographers. Yes. I mean, everybody who's making one lucky shot of an of a dish from top, they they say that they are a food. Yeah, but, uh, so. mm, yeah, yes and no. Uh, this is this is uh, for sure. This is um, happened at the moment, and um, and it it really harms us in in a way. Uh, but you know, um, uh, on the other side, if you see um, Per Anders Jorgensen and his uh, uh, Fool magazine. Uh, it encourages you just to to go new ways, and he makes a life out of it. Yeah. He sells his, his pictures through his own magazine. So um, I'm doing my pictures for my my own applications um, uh, as a part of the business. Um, so yeah. so um, we, we all have to move. Like a restaurant has to move and it's closed. It has to think of a takeaway. And we have to think uh, if there is one dominated channel that uh, this requires a, a certain language, eat the, they make the certain use the same language or uh, search another way. Um, yeah, you know. But this is what we what um, what normally what we, I really love on, on the festival, uh, for sure. As when you're long for long years in the business, uh, you, you're <clears throat> you easily can say uh, it was better. Yeah, I, I got better prices in the '90s uh, and in the '80s, no doubt for the for the same work. Um, but um. You know, if you if you are there and you say, well, in the nineties I got better prices, is one point of uh, point of view. But you see, like these young photographers, like uh, Vivi or like um, uh, Ryan Janssen or Avasili Pass, uh, who come f to the festival from from all around the world. Uh, if you hear them talking about photography and about the business, and uh, it, you know, it it gives you power. It because um, I I fell back when I was thirty. Uh, yeah, there's an energy and let, let's start, let go, don't look back. This is where we, we uh, from here we start. Yeah, and I think this is um, yeah. this is simply it's very personal. Uh, but I think um, yeah, uh, you have to move. Yes, you have to move with the changes that are yeah. happening now. Yeah. And and now we are talking about prices. Um, Remco was asking, why are you in Spain when the, pr the the budgets on food photography in Germany are way much higher? <laughs> is that so? <laughs> it is so. And uh, I, I have some some good clients in Spain. Um, and uh, for for example, a fishmonger, I worked for them for the last ten years, and um, uh, they pay my prices. And um, the 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 most um, work I do is is also is editorial work. So I work for for publishing houses, and they are normally in Holland or in uh, UK or in Germany. So um, Spain is is just a perfect place to live. And my wife is from here, and my kids are born here. Uh, uh, and there's no need for me to to be in a in a in another place. No. No, especially not for the budgets, because you're just sticking to your own prices. Yeah. Am yeah. I correct? More or less. Yeah. yeah. No, they, they they went down. Since the 90s, definitely they went down. But uh, I can make a good life of it, out of it. Yeah. Who, are you, who, is, who was your role model when you were starting out with, with photography? I didn't understand. Was there a one a food photographer you were you were looking up to? No, 
Uh, as a matter of fact, no. When, when Könemann uh, asked me to do this culinary work, it was, this was the very first time I get in touch with, uh, with food and food photography. Ah, yes. And um, ah. I really, I really learned this. I, I was so happy because it was a book on uh, which, which really um, asked also for for reportage photography. So uh, I just every day I learned something, and I uh, learned about <laughs> lightning and what what I can do, what I can't do. Uh, I, I took thousands and thousands of pictures uh, for this book. And, um, yeah, and I learned a lot. And uh, this was also my reason why I, why I showed it then to the Feinschmecker, because I thought, uh, I can't judge. Uh, is this good or is it not good food? You never know. The, the people are, hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, you notice in, in a lot of people, a lot of photographers, they, they know their, their skills and they can, could do good food photography. They don't because they, they're unable to judge if what they have done is good or not. Uh, because the, the, um, in food, is there's one more aspect, uh, as in, in the other photography. It, it's the aspect of taste. And um, um, uh, or oh, delicious, you know. And, and uh, this one is, is not easy to learn. And so, no, I started from scratch. I did just, I tried to tell the story. And um, uh, photographers in general, do you have one one favorite? When I asked it to Jan, uh, he said he was more like uh, like Man Ray in the surrealistic uh, quarters of uh, photography. Um, also, not really. I, I, when uh, <clears throat> in my student time, there was um, uh, I was working for for a, a city magazine, and there was a photographer, uh, Gandalf Huber. And uh, I really liked his approach. So I learned a lot from him. And in, in my times of, um, as, a, uh, as a local reporter in, uh, back in Bavaria, there was also a photographer um, who, who his style I liked very much. And so I, I, I learned a lot from him. He, his, his regular lens was a 20 millimeter. And his longest lens was a 20, oh. 24 millimeter. So <laughs> he was really always in the center of what happened. And so I, I learned a lot from this. But um, uh, later then I looked to photo books and, uh, and exhibitions. But um, I never tried, or, um, and, and, let's say, I, I never looked for inspiration in photography. I looked a lot in art. Uh, in uh, art exhibitions, paintings, and uh, things like this, but not so much in photography. Mm, do you often go to art museums or galleries? Whenever I can, yeah. And what was the last one you saw? Well, everything is closed. Um, the last one in um, was a big exhibition, but I, d I don't remember the name. I'm sorry for this for this artist uh, in in Cologne in the Museum Ludwig. Uh, uh, brilliant conceptual art. He photocopies and, and scans things and put it together and uh, shapes things completely new. Um, yeah, something like this. Uh, this was the last one, the last one, big one I saw. Conceptual art. What do you think of yeah. contemporary art? Uh, in, um, some years ago, I was in Berlin, and there was an exhibition, and there was a big neon sign on the on the museum that says, "Every art in his time was con uh, contemporary." Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I think I think the same. Yeah, yes, that's that's so But true. I like modern art. I, uh, definitely, I like modern art and uh, contemporary art. Uh, It's it's more inspiring for me than than uh, uh, art history, but um, uh, yeah. But I think that, that this phrase is very true. Yeah, yeah. So do I. But some but, but some some works of modern art, I find it really hard to understand what I'm looking at, and I um, uh, basically I I always think that an image should be good on itself. So you don't need to see to to know the context or the text with that comes with an artwork, 
But with modern art, I sometimes I just scratch my ear and I look, oh, I don't know what, what, what I'm looking at because it's so strange. And how do you experience mm. that? And, mm, well, my, my view on this is more than, um, when I see something I really don't understand. Either I like it or I like it not. If I like it, it will it will stick in my brain and uh, it will work there. Yes. And if I don't like it, I just forget it. Uh, but uh, you know, from for me, this if you if you see art, um, then imagine you have to see it ten years every day. This gives you a kind of a different angle uh, to to see in a piece of art. If you imagine, would you like to see this uh, every day uh, for a long time? Uh, it's, it's very helpful to to step back and to put it in into another context. Yeah, yeah, and it also well. And then the definition: what is good art? For me, is uh, when 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 it speaks to you in a kind. It can be negative or positive. But um, I was looking at a, a, a photo book of of Man Ray, and it was with the dead bodies. And I really got uh, got uh, got got sick in my stomach, and I I couldn't sleep all night. And I was like, "Oh my god, this is such a good photograph," <laughs> because it <laughs> it touches me so deeply, and yeah. that, that's what I define as a good artwork. Well, then it's a good image for in, when I'm talking about photography. Then, but um, what's your definition? Yeah. If it causes emotions, or if it, if it makes you think. Yeah. yeah, you have to feel something. I, I, I really believe that art and food as well is um, you, you, then you use all your senses. If you're making art, you're using all your senses. But when you're eating, you're using all the senses. I'm really fascinated of the of the senses who are being touched up by by both of them, like food and art. Yeah. This um, in the last documenta, or not in the, not in the last, the one before, uh, Ferran Adrial, the famous Spanish cook, was invited mm. to, to be as an artist. Uh, he exhibited at the, at the documenta, um, which I think is was a was a very good idea. You um, you can discuss if this kind of uh, food and what he did in this time uh, really was worth it. But um, uh, it was about time of recognition that uh, that. The, the um, art shouldn't uh, shouldn't touch only um, only the the brain or, or the emotion. It also should touch the, the taste. Yes, I I really believe that chefs are artists too, and especially Ferran and Adria, <clears throat> because he he they I I believe that that art is if you take something and you just transport it into something new that's what chefs are doing and they create new tastes and new textures and new everything Combinations, yeah. yeah and yeah. then new sensations yeah they make they make really temporary art <laughs> yeah yeah but i really believe they are artists too and that's when when i say that that then i often get the question Okay, but what are you then as a food photographer? Are you the artist or is the chef the artist? <laughs> so that's that's always an interesting question. Uh, yeah, it was, it is, and um, it's a it's a dilemma. And um, in, in 2015, uh, we exhibit um, uh, food photography from a very talented young Danish photographer. She lives in New York. And um, she um, brought up a series of 20 really fine and really clear photog photographed um, uh, dishes. Surely the, the, the handwriting of the, of the dish itself was from, from the chef, and uh, that was the idea. Uh, and and a year, uh, two years later, I asked Araceli Pass from Chile to exhibit, and she said, she said, yeah, I, I don't know. I would love to, but when I do, uh, uh, when I, uh, it, it might be this a kind of same thing like this Danish photographer, um, because what is mine in the in the food picture and what is um, what is from the from the chef. Um, 
so is she at the end she said no I, I'm, I really I don't dare to because I don't know and um, this is the dilemma we are in um, a, a food photo is always a teamwork yeah and uh, either the, the, the food stylist and the photographer or the or the chef and the photographer and um, and uh, both have uh, uh, no no one can without the others yeah and i think the approach of tony leduc when he did it with um with the books of sergio herman he would take the ingredients and the, the prepared ingredients and he just um recomposed everything and then he transformed it into his typical Tony Leduc style because he was very innovative uh, for yeah. food photography at that time. Yeah. So I believe that he is an artist, but I asked him for the podcast too. And he said, well, I'm not an artist. So I don't know if you, if you really need me for this podcast. Well, I think that's very interesting to talk to him about this because he feels like I'm just a, com I, I'm just a photographer and I'm not an artist. But This, um, this is what I think from, from myself as well. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, for me, Tony Leduc, um, uh, uh, doubtless, is an artist. Yeah, yes, that's what I believe too. It was in, <laughs> was in the, already for the first exhibition I asked him to exhibit, but there he was too busy making an exhibition in, in Antwerp. And so I called him two years later and I said, yeah, I have time. <laughs> and so we showed his work. <laughs> and I was really, really proud to, to be able to present his work. Uh, yes. He's an amazing photographer. Yeah. Um, I really loved um, uh, Manfred Rafe. I saw, well, this morning I was, I was going through my, 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 my collected stuff of photographers and I was like, oh, I really loved his work. <laughs> yeah. And I, I talked, this was what I said before. I talked to, talked to Manfred in, uh, in Weile and uh, he told me, yeah, you know, uh, an amateur can take a photograph like this. But he he has not the the, the 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 creativity to make twenty of this. Yeah. Uh, to come back to the to the old stories was was his phrase, and I, I thought, yeah, he's really right. This is one of our uh, part of the profession, mm, telling a whole story in 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 more photographs and all in the same quality, on the same level of quality. Yeah. Yes, and, and do you also think that it has to be an authentic uh, story? That the artist is telling? No, there has to be an idea. Art is, is uh, an, if it's authentic, then it's journalism. If it's uh, decorative, then it's design. Uh, if it's an idea, it's art. <laughs> this is my, my very, very private and uh, simple uh, categorizing. Yeah, interesting. Thank you. Um, so, um, what uh, tell us something more about Food Photo Festival. If the people who are listening never went to the Food Photo Festival or does not know, why should they go? That this is uh, you, you should tell. <laughs> 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 because you know, as I'm, I'm created it, um, and I'm, I'm very proud of my baby. But um, yeah, and uh, um, I'm, I'm very happy uh, that uh, you all receiving it so well and uh, and filling it with life yes so um, yes. and it, yeah well I, I i can i can add to it that the um the okay, we we have our own restaurant and after five months my husband already got a michelin star and when i got this award for me it was my michelin star for Very good. photography <laughs> 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 yes i'm really happy <clears throat> So, Very good. Um, to close I will up. copy this and, uh, and use this phrase if I am allowed to. <laughs> oh yes, of course, yes, of course. <laughs> um, what is your? What is? Your, how do you see the future of food photography in about ten years? Um, better. <laughs> better. 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 Doubtless better. And um, can it? I can explain it to you. Um, with an uh, uh, the first exhibition for the for the first food photo festival, I asked Feinschmecker to uh, to give me from the last thirty years, from every year one picture. Uh, so, and it was like a time tunnel through food photography from 
1980 to uh, 2010. And uh, if you see the pictures from the 80s, uh, you know, a plate of oysters <laughs> on red velvet, uh, darkish light, and uh, on the side dropped some high heels. Um, <laughs> you know but it was it was in this time it was uh what what was used as as food photography uh so i think um, if we could talk in 30 years um then we might talk about the the, the 2020 uh photography um, like all from bird's angle, uh, bird's eye angle, or uh, you know, <laughs> we might talk the same. Uh, this yeah. is why I think it will be better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you a lot for this interview. Um, You're very welcome. To close it off, I have like a rapid fire of twenty-one questions. You need to answer every question within three seconds. So, okay. <laughs> are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> okay, who was your greatest teacher? Uh, a mathematics teacher in, in in high school. What's your life motto? Uh, learn. Uh, what do you wish for more on this earth? Uh, no racism, no trumps, no populism, no fascism. Ah, oh, wow. Um, what is your most precious physical possession? Most precious physical possession? I love wine. <laughs> what is your first thing you do after a hard day's work? Uh, sometimes having a glass of wine. <laughs> What's your ultimate luxury? Ultimate luxury. <laughs> having time what uh, what can we wake you up for in the middle of the night different things could be good or bad <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to relax uh, sometimes a glass of wine <laughs> <laughs> what character trait do you find really annoying about yourself uh I think I know a lot of things better than others, and I think this is not a good idea. <laughs> what is your favorite restaurant worldwide? <clears throat> Michel Bra. What is the most memorable dish you have ever eaten? Uh, a salad from Michel Bra. Uh, well, yeah. mm -hmm. And what was in it? Uh, he takes over 12 different herbs um, from his garden uh, according to time. That's it. Ah, nice. Incredible. What temptation can you not resist? Good wine. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of leadership style do you adopt? Uh, team. What other profession would you have done? The, guess journalism because it's, it, it allows you also to step into different people's life and uh, and understand it. Do you consider yourself as an artist? No. Which dish would you ask for if you had a personal chef? <sighs> This is a question like smoking. You can't eat even I love anchovies. I can't eat it every day, 20 of it. <laughs> Um, okay. When do you get seriously angry at work? Uh, when I try to trick myself. Which person in the industry do you look up to? There's so many. Really different. I love different styles and different ideas. And, uh, and there's a lot of very good people. What is your biggest fear? Not having enough time. Who influenced you the most in your profession? MacGyver. <laughs> And the last question, sex or an excellent dinner? Both. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for this interview. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> 
Thank you all for listening. I hope you had lots of fun. If you want to send me some feedback, you can go to artfoodpleasure.com and you will find everything you need. Thank you all and I hope to see you next week.